What's going on guys, Josh Baldwin here, and welcome back to Mad Money Millennial. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on personal finance and the latest in financial news. I also provide business coaching services for entrepreneurs. So if you're thinking about starting your own business, I'm now offering free business consultations, no strings attached. So if you're interested, please send me an email at madmoneymillennial at gmail.com and I will set up a call with you to discuss how we can take your idea and turn it into a reality. Now, before I get into this video, please Hulk smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the Chase Freedom Unlimited credit card. I'm going to be discussing some of the positive things people have to say about this credit card, as well as some of the negative things. I will also be providing real questions from real people so that I can provide you guys with the most accurate review of this credit card and so that you guys can gain the necessary tools that you need to make the right decision on your own. So the first pro on the list of Chase Freedom Unlimited credit card benefits is that new card members can earn $200 in spend bonus money when they spend $500 within the first three months of their account opening. On top of that, you'll be happy to know that this card offers no annual fee and 1.5% cash back on all purchases. New cashback benefits include 5% cash back on all travel purchased through Chase Ultimate Rewards, 3% cash back on dining at restaurants, including takeout and eligible delivery services, and 3% cash back on drugstore purchases. Cashback rewards do not expire for the entire life of the account as long as it remains open. There is also no minimum to receive cash back, so technically you can request a cash back withdrawal of $1, have them mail you a check, take it to the bank and have the teller physically hand you a $1 bill and then go to the vending machine and buy a bag of nacho cheese Doritos with it. The best Dorito flavor. Leave a comment below if you disagree. You will also have a 0% introductory APR for the first 15 months from the account opening and then at a variable rate of 14.99 to 23.74% ongoing APR. Other benefits include 120-day purchase protection, extended warranties, car rental insurance, trip cancellation and interruption insurance. So if you have a vacation planned, you'll be covered in the event that someone gets sick or the weather goes bad. You will also receive 5% cash back on Lyft purchases through March 2022, complimentary DoorDash Dash Pass membership, which gives you three months of $0 delivery fees, among other perks. Now the APR rates on this credit card are a little bit on the higher range, so ladies and gentlemen, please do not get into the habit of not paying back your balance in full before the due date each month. Another issue with credit cards is that you rarely remember what month you open them because you're so busy spending money and using it that you negate the terms you agreed to in the first place when you applied for that credit card. For example, you may forget to pay in full one month after the 15 month intro period and mistakenly cause your account to begin accruing late fees and interest charges along with it. So as you can see, there are many inherent dangers in buying your first credit card. And so it's best to follow some general safe practices to keep yourself from falling into the credit debt trap that so many fall into. The most important rule of course, to pay your balance back in full on time every month. All right, now for some of the cons of this credit card. I already mentioned the high APR after the 15 month 0% introductory period. Looks like for balance transfers, they do charge a $5 or 5% amount of each transfer, whichever is greater. So if you're thinking about moving money from a high interest credit card onto one with a better rate, you can pretty safely move it to the Chase Freedom Unlimited card, but only during the 15 month introductory period. You don't want to move it after this period because that is when you begin to be charged the ongoing APR rate. So it may not be your best option to move high interest credit card debt onto an equally high interest credit card, especially if you haven't yet developed a good habit of making your payments on time. All right, now average credit scores for approved Chase Freedom Unlimited members are pretty high. Honestly, not really a good choice for beginners or people with credit scores under around 680. So if you do have under a 680 credit score, that doesn't mean you automatically won't qualify. Credit companies do focus on a whole person perspective, taking into consideration a variety of factors, 
but generally speaking, you'll want to be closer to the 700 or above range to really have an easy time to qualify for this credit card. All right, real questions from real people regarding the Chase Freedom Unlimited credit card. First of all, are these cashback benefits permanent or will they eventually expire? So I recently checked the official Chase credit cards website and as of September 13th, 2020, these new cashback rewards have been effective and are expected to continue. All right, do you need a bank account to apply? In most cases, having a bank account with the credit card you're applying to is generally the easiest way to get qualified. But while it may not be a requirement to have a bank account to apply for most credit cards, according to the Chase website, online credit card applications are open to US residents, people with a US mailing address, over 18 years old, and either possess a social security number or individual tax identification number. Now, following the passage of the Credit Card Act of 2009, if you're under the age of 21, you will require a co-signer or proof of income as part of your application process. All right, I wanted to wrap this up by addressing how much you can expect to save annually on average with the Chase Freedom Unlimited credit card. Based on average spending from the US Labor Bureau of Labor Statistics, during the first year, Chase Freedom Unlimited card members are saving an average of around $728. Breaking this down even further, here you'll see the amounts you can save based on the cashback rates for each of these spending categories. Something important to mention is that Chase cards are subject to something called the 524 rule. All right, now what is the 524 rule? Well, in order to be approved for a Chase credit card, you cannot have opened five or more personal credit cards across all banks within the last 24 months. All right, that means four or less credit cards. Also keep in mind that you never want to unnecessarily have your credit pulled, trigger another inquiry and hurt your credit score. Protecting your credit, especially during these uncertain financial times, should remain a priority. So in summary, pretty great credit card in terms of the cashback rates and the amount of rewards you can receive, especially for travel. Also a pretty excellent card for borrowers that need a little extra time to pay down their expenses with that 0% introductory APR period. All right, guys, that's all I have for now regarding the Chase Freedom Unlimited credit card. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment and I will be sure to respond. And as always, stay hustling and I'll talk to you guys again next week. Brooke B brought it from the space.